participants and uh, today I would like to present this proposal for the demarcation of digital humanities. Uh, this work is, is, a, is a product by a large team within the Hispanic Digital Humanities International Society. So today I'm speaking on behalf of the, of the whole team. Um, the motivation for this work uh, comes from a, a, a set of questions that we as members of, of the, of the uh, Digital Humanities Society uh, found over and over again. For instance, uh, what, what is the association supposed to engage with or associations such as uh, European or, or global level associations in digital humanities? What are they supposed to engage with? Uh, what should we teach future digital humanities professionals? Uh, who is working in digital humanities? Um, uh, what, what kind of proposals are eligible uh, for a digital humanities grant or award? Or how should science agencies and funding bodies um, in any country uh, acknowledge and promote digital humanities? All these questions can be easily answered if we know what digital humanities are about, but are more difficult to answer or even impossible if we don't have a clear view of what digital humanities are. So um, demarcation is a very old problem, and, uh, and for millennia, um, people have struggled to demarcate science from non-science, for example, or some disciplines from other disciplines. So uh, demarcation is about establishing criteria that allow us to distinguish what's in and what's out, what counts as digital humanities and what doesn't. Uh, our the purpose with this proposal is to distinguish digital humanities from regular humanities or plain humanities. So that is humanities as traditionally performed in the absence of any digital technologies. Um, since both digital humanities and regular humanities are both humanities by definition, what distinguishes them is digital technologies. And that's why technology has a special role, a very prominent role, in this proposal. Uh, we also want that this proposal is applicable to many different kinds of objects, such as um, research projects or the outcomes of those projects, or university departments or research centers, uh, curricula, events like conferences, etc. And another, uh, um, another principle that we had in mind all the time was that we didn't want to judge academic value or merit. So the demarcation proposal should allow us to distinguish what is digital humanities and what isn't, but should not engage at all with how valuable something is or how much merit or academic value it contains. That's a different issue and it's not addressed whatsoever by this proposal. So the principles uh, that we started with, uh, that we started from, are these. Uh, first of all, uh, as a discipline, we, we recognize that digital humanities are quite young as compared to other uh, more conventional disciplines. And, and, and this is the reason why we must be agile and flexible in, the, in any proposal that we make in relation to digital humanities. Um, a second principle is that we took uh, digital technologies as quite as a quite wide and inclusive concept. So here we don't only include things like uh, computer programs, but also um, conceptual models or any kind of formalism or uh, or technology that is related to with the automated processing of information. We distinguish between generic and specialized technologies. So generic technologies are those that can be used or are often used by almost anybody, regardless of what they are working in. So a, a wood processor or a database management system would be an example of a generic technology because you can use it no matter whether you are a historian, a physicist, or, or whatever. On the other hand, specialized technologies are technologies that are designed for very specific fields. For example, a geographical information system or a computer is designed for, well, for a, quite a few uh, scenarios, but it's not likely to be used by uh, people who are not working with uh, geographical um, information or, 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 or a similar kind of, of situation. Um, as an additional distinction, we differentiate between nominal 
and non-nominal usage of technology. So when you use a technology, you can use it nominally, and that means for the purpose that this technology has been developed. So if we use a word processor for writing a document, that is a nominal use. However, if we use the word processor for a different purpose, for example, for keeping a database in a table, that would be a non-nominal use. Non-nominal use is more innovative, but also uh, usually entails some frictions because by definition you're using the technology for something different to what the technology has been designed for. In addition to nominal and non-nominal use, technologies can also be analyzed. So going beyond the mere use of the technology, we can also analyze them. So study how technologies are being employed by people and how that usage is affecting work or social practice or whatever. And we can even go a step beyond that. We can develop technologies. So in addition to using and analyzing, we can also create new technologies for later use. So these three um, steps, uh, usage, analysis, and development, constitute the backbone of the proposal. The demarcation approach that we um, uh, demonstrate today is precisely based around this concept of technology usage, analysis, and development. If we use technology, we are situated in a, in a level that we call A, A level, if we go beyond usage and analyze how technology is being employed, we go into the B level. And if we not only use and analyze technology, but also develop new technologies, then we are placed in this third or C level. Within each of, within each of these levels, there are some different thresholds corresponding to how technology is used or how technology is developed. In addition, there is what we call a threshold zero, which corresponds to no technology at all. So for example, any project or outcome that is not engaging with digital technologies at all would be placed in this threshold zero. This would not constitute digital humanities, but rather regular humanities with no digital uh, aspect. Now, if you move to the level A that corresponds to usage, this means that existing digital technologies are being used to address humanistic concerns. Uh, very often, the internal workings of these technologies are not um, understood or known because we don't need to. We just want the technologies to be used and applied to humanistic concerns. Um, within this level, there is three thresholds. The first one is about the generic nominal application. So this means that uh, we apply existing technologies nominally, so for the purpose they were conceived, and we apply them to a, in generic settings. So these are technologies that anybody could potentially use. For example, we can use Microsoft Excel or a similar system to store and process some data. Or we can use HTML and CSS to build a website. These are examples, like everyday examples, of digital technologies being nominally applied in a generic situation. Now, if you go beyond this, we can perhaps apply specialized technologies. So technologies that, that are not for everyone, that require specific scenarios and specific training. Or we can apply nominal technologies, but in a customized way. So we can perhaps uh, adapt or customize technologies for our particular needs. Customize here means that the technology is not applied as it is, but after uh, we have used some customization mechanisms that are provided with the technology. For example, if we use Microsoft Excel or Word uh, for a nominal purpose, but after adding some macros or some scripts to it that customize how they work, that would be threshold two. We would be using a customized uh, application. Or if we use a specialized application, for example, if we use Gephi or uh, some geographical information system tools in the computer, this would also constitute a threshold two. Now, we can move to threshold three by doing non-nominal application. That is uh, applying technologies uh, for a purpose that is significantly different to that for which they were designed. For example, back in the 1980s, geographical information systems began uh, being used in archeology. span And this was quite innovative. It 
because these systems have been designed for a totally different kind of application. Nowadays, some people are using vector techniques taken from distributional semantics to working with images, for example, or are using uh, simulators for the thermal acoustic lining properties of buildings for historical research. All these are examples of application of existing technology outside its uh, intended field of application. And that's why we consider this threshold three non-nominal application. Now, let's move to the second level. This entails not only using technology, but also applying uh, an analysis and studying how technology is actually practiced and employed in relation to humanistic issues. Uh, this analysis means that the workings of the digital technologies uh, must be known beyond its mere usage, especially in, in relation to how this affects social practice uh, rather than the design of development. Um, for example, threshold four is precisely about analysis or evaluation. And this means that we, or whoever is doing this, is carrying out a scientific analysis or a systematic evaluation of the established practice for a particular digital technology. Of course, this uh, must constitute a, a, a genuine research effort that involves constructive criticism as an outcome, uh, and not just simply assessing some technologies to make a decision on which one we are going to use. So this must be a, a scientific, as I say, a systematic uh, effort that uh, outputs a constructive criticism of how technologies are being used. Some examples, uh, for instance, uh, we can carry out an ethnographic study on how the application of some technologies are affecting work at an organization. Or we can study how well some techniques, some non-nominal techniques, for example, work in the humanities. All these studies about technology will be threshold for analysis or evaluation. Okay. Let's move to the third level, level C, which, as I said before, entails uh, the development of new digital technologies. Now we are not only using existing technologies or analyzing how they are being used, but we are also developing new technologies. Mm -hmm. um, these new technologies very often will support uh, new theoretical or methodological approaches, not necessarily, but this is quite common. And of course, the development of new technologies requires that we have a deep and critical vision of the technological panorama. If we are going to develop a new one, that is usually because we have assessed what there is already and we have decided that something new is necessary. Of course, this requires specialized skills for the design and, development, uh, and development of these technologies. By development, we mean the application of uh, software or systems engineering principles and techniques to building these systems. Mm -hmm. We don't mean uh, just simply any kind of production of something new. We mean the application of these uh, recognized engineering principles that are uh, often uh, taught and, and discussed in relation to established uh, software and systems engineering. This excludes, for example, uh, the, the use of existing products to create contents. For example, if we use WordPress or a similar content management system to create a website, that, would be, that wouldn't be development. That doesn't count as level C development because the, the outcome, the, the website that we are creating is not a new technology. It's just some contents that have been generated by using a tool for its intended purpose. Okay. Um, the first threshold in this level is what we call basic development, and this involves uh, new digital tools being developed um, that are simple, close, and not very innovative. Uh, by close, we mean that these tools are usually employed by the same people uh, that develop them, so they are um, created for uh, your own and, uh, uh, use. They are also used usually for the same project or problem they were created for. Um, therefore, they are not distributed to third parties. There is no integration mechanisms, and very rarely there is any kind of documentation or learning material. So there, there is, these are tools uh, created for your own consumption. Um, basic development uh, 
also entails uh, the fact that these uh, tools are usually not very innovative. This means that they do not implement new knowledge or support new techniques, but previously existing ones. For example, if you develop a, a little program that implements the calculation of fly scatter, which is a well-known metric in the statistics, and you have no intention to distribute uh, or, uh, or integrate it into other systems, the, this would be a typical example of basic development. You are creating something new, for sure, but it's not um, intended for distribution or for application outside its initial scenario. Now, we can move to advanced development. This will be threshold six, okay? And advanced development is related to new digital tools that are developed, but in an open and innovative manner. And by open, we mean that these tools are not restricted to the group or project where they were created. Uh, they, they, they are designed to address the needs of a larger community, which is very often not very well known to us. We know there is a community that may benefit from this tool, but we don't necessarily know every individual in this community. We also, uh, in this threshold, we, we also distribute these tools to third parties. We, we worry about distribution and dissemination. We usually offer integration mechanisms with other technologies, and we uh, worry about documenting systematically these tools and making some learning resources available for future users. Uh, in addition, these tools are usually innovative in the sense that they are not limited to implementing existing knowledge and approaches but they often integrate new knowledge that we have created and support new techniques that we have developed as well. For example, the people who develop sketch engine by using uh, software engineering principles, they documented it, they put it on the web, and they distributed it to many people. This would be a good example of advanced development at threshold six. Hmm? Or for example, if you construct a drone for archeological aerial photography, and disseminate its design for others to replicate, that also would entail uh, advanced development. Finally, I want to describe the threshold seven, which is the last one in the series, which we call transdisciplinary code research. And this involves research being actively carried out at the same time in the humanities and in digital technologies in such a way that advances in each of these two disciplines benefit the other. So advancing uh, the humanities benefits digital technologies and advancing digital technologies benefits the humanities. When we say actively carried out, by actively we mean that the state of the art is being advanced in both disciplines at the same time and outcomes are being published in journals and conferences of both fields at the same time. So the relationship between the humanities and the digital technologies is symmetrical. An example would be uh, proposing new techniques in conceptual modeling in software engineering thanks to some anthropological research and anthropological research being also assisted by conceptual modeling. So this cross mutual benefit is what characterizes threshold seven. Now to, to, fi to finalize, I want to discuss also some uh, non-definitional properties. And these are properties of that we very often find in the digital humanities, but are not definitional. They are not exclusive to digital humanities. They are also present in other fields of inquiry. The first is about open and share data or free and open software and other ways to openly share knowledge uh, that are often encouraged. Okay, this is typical of digital humanities, but not exclusive. Uh, something similar happens with collaboration, the sharing of tasks and responsibility across individuals, teams, and organizations. Again, this is typical of the digital humanities, but not exclusive. And something similar happens with multidisciplinarity, so involving specialists in many different fields, communicating across disciplines. This, again, is typical, but not exclusive of digital humanities. Okay, so um, currently we, uh, we have this proposal. We have asked uh, over 20 external reviewers to provide comments on it. And we are currently processing this feedback. Uh, so in the, near, in the near future, hopefully we will have a, a, a reviewed and better version of the proposal. We are also planning to open this to a larger community within the association. And of course, we will be very happy to receive your feedback now. 
In summary, our goal was to distinguish what is digital humanities from what is regular humanities and do this in degrees in different thresholds rather than as a binary distinction. Okay? We also want to do it in a systematic and rigorous manner that is consensual, as consensual as possible, and of course avoiding any judging of the scientific value or merit of each proposal. And for this, your input is very welcome. So thank you. Thank you very much.